In this video, I'm going to show you how to modify the game animation sample project to add motion matched landing rolls when you jump or fall from above a certain height. We'll keep the existing light and heavy landings from GASP, and I'll walk you through modifying the animation blueprint, the motion matching chooser table, and creating a post search database for the roll animations. This is an easy modification, so let's get into it. Starting from an unmodified game animation sample project, and you can see any of my other GASP videos for how to do that, first, we'll do the design work of figuring out when we want the landing roll to engage. Right now, heavy landing kicks in at the heavy landing threshold, which I'll show you, and you can tune that however you like. But when you're deciding whether to when to roll or when to just do a hard landing, we need to figure out what that threshold is. And so let's talk about what, what feels right. So we have this um, clearly shouldn't be at this lower, lower level. The roll would feel a little gratuitous there. But in this case, Perhaps if at this level, if you just run off of it, you'll just do a hard landing. But if you were to jump, that would cause a roll. And this higher platform, if you were to just run off of it, you would exp you would think that's going to cause a roll. So the threshold is somewhere around there. Let's go ahead and just monitor the landing speed. We'll do that by going to Content Blueprints CBP Sandbox Character. And we're trying to find where the... Uh, on landed event. To find that, you can hunt around through all the events that are here, or you can just make sure your find results window is enabled and go down to find results and just type on landed or just type landed. And so there's the event right there. We can now zoom right in. And the first thing it does is set land velocity. So as part of this on landed chain, whenever that happens, let's go ahead and just print a string. And it was called land velocity. So let's get land velocity and actually we'll just put the whole vector right in so it's going to convert that to a string so we're going to get the x y and z components we only care about the z component the vertical speed um, and so now let's run so every time i land yep so that z was negative 504 there's a 1281 so clearly between 504 and 1281, we want uh, want this to happen. So let's go over here, like we said. So if you run off of this, we don't want it to trigger. So that's 710. But if you jump off of it, we do. 863. And now let's just see if we can get a nice consistent one. So if we run off this, 833. Okay, so it seems like 800 is the threshold for where we want to actually roll. So let's get to it. I'll leave this in place for now, just as a, as a convenience, but we're going to do pretty much all of our work is going to happen in the animation blueprint and over in the uh, post search databases. So let's go over to the animation blueprint and let's see how we can add this logic of whether the character can roll. Actually, the first thing we'll do, so we're now in the animation blueprint, we have our find results up again, that's via window find results. Actually, we'll search for landed again and see what we have. So just landed light, just landed heavy. There's these two functions, and these are actually accessed by the chooser table. So if you want to know what chooser table, the animation selection that's being used by the motion matching, you can just search for evaluate chooser. Or you can search for chooser probably, but evaluate chooser. And so sure enough, here's the node, and that tells you which post search database you're using. So there's the post search databases. They're going to be two dense and sparse and that's based on your LOD for your motion matching so we're gonna we know we're in zero right now so we'll go ahead and open up uh, our dense database oh there we go it was hidden behind so we go to our dense database and then we know we want standing runs um, so for idle we're not gonna roll we'll just do a hard landing we can work on that later but for standing runs, that's where we're going to cause this roll to happen. And you'll notice we have these binding of just landed light and just landed heavy, which are functions in the animation blueprint, which we were just looking at. So let's go find just landed light again. I'm just going to type landed because that'll get us there. So there's just landed light. And if you look, it checks again that land velocity Z value and it checks whether it's under or over the heavy land threshold. And just landed heavy is going to check, and instead of checking for less than, it's going to check for greater than or equal to that threshold. And that'll return true. So we want one can roll is going to be this. So it's really a three-step three process. You've got light landings, which are if you're under the threshold, 
heavy landings which are over the threshold and then if you're over 800 for example which is a different threshold we're going to say that you can roll and then we'll add that to the chooser table to go pick the rolls so we'll go ahead and just duplicate this function so we go down to our functions just landed heavy duplicate just landed can roll okay so if you just landed and your velocity is greater than and for now we can we can elevate this to a another uh, we can call it roll land speed threshold let's do that so we'll make a variable so the heavy land speed threshold will add another essential value um, and that's a float we'll compile the blueprint so we can set a default value and we know the default value because we just checked it is 800 but that's going to be tunable as we go um, I'm going to throw this in the essential values so it's along with the rest of them. And now, instead of this, we can go drag this out, replace it. So now, if it's above that, you can roll. And that's it for the blueprints. That's all we have to do. We didn't have to actually make any modifications. The CVP blueprint was really just, uh, or the character blueprint was just to uh, be able to assess what our speed needed to cause the roll to occur so that was more of a design aspect than anything otherwise so we we'll compile our character blueprint everything looks good we're done with this so now all we have to do is go change the post search database in the chooser table and we're there so we go back to our post search database and i think we're even deeper so there's our that's our main post search databases which leads us to the dense which is here and now we have our lands light and heavy landings so we're going to add a column to this um, and it's a boolean column we'll bind it and just landed can roll and so with this one we want this is our heavy landing and we want that to be false and then we're going to go ahead and add another row of a psd asset And so let's go duplicate. We'll just duplicate this, even though we're, we know what we're building. But I'm just going to duplicate this levy, heavy landing, and we'll call this heavy roll. And we'll drag that into this right here. So now we have heavy roll. We'll go again. We'll select that asset, open it up, open it up. And you see we have the uh, heavy landings, which we don't need anymore. So we can go ahead and get rid of these, but for now I'll just turn them all off. But for optimization, you really want to just get rid of them. And then let's go add our roles. So I'm going to select these because that's generally the directory where everything is. And then I will just type. So that's content, characters, UEFN, mannequin, animations, jump. And let's just search for role and see what we got. Yep, there we go. We got two of them. So we have the left foot and right foot initiating roles. So we'll go back over here, drag these in, we'll take a look at this. What is this? Reselection from the same asset. No, we don't need that. Let's go make sure everything is set up here. So you may have it that enable root motion is turned off and force, loop, force lock, root lock. Go ahead and enable that for both of these animations if it's not already done. And sure enough, let's go take a look at this animation. Get below the floor so we can see what's going on here. Oh yeah, that's a nice roll. And so now we go back to our chooser database and this is can roll is true. So now let's go try it out. Sweet. So there you go. So you have a nice light landing here. We run off of this. Yep, nice heavy landing. And now if we jump. Oh, excellent. So everything's working exactly how we designed it. You now have an idea for how you might add more complex landing logic. If we run off this, we should roll. And we do. And that's it. Thanks for watching.